So what's up guys, it's D, and today we're going to be having a little bit of a story time. So this story time is going to be about the first time that I broke 50 seconds in a 400 meter dash. Now, I broke 50 seconds uh, a couple of times, but this is going to be about the first time that I broke 50 seconds. So let's get started. All right. So the first time that I broke 50 seconds in a 400 meter dash was, was the most amazing feeling of my life at that particular time. Um, I was struggling to break 50 seconds and just, and just to give it some context or whatever, it was my first year in college when I broke 50 seconds. Um, actually, actually it was after my first year in college, that summer after college. Now I was one of those athletes who was 17 when I graduated high school. So, um, I was 17. I didn't turn 17 until after my first semester at my school. So at that particular time I was going to Savannah state. And, you know, I was a 400 meter hurdler, never ran the 400 meter hurdles um, until maybe uh, th what a couple of times after my senior year. Um, again, I was one of those athletes who was an OK 400 meter runner. But once I did the 400 meter hurdles um, or once I tried to find a way to get to college, I tried to try. I tried the 400 meter hurdles and I ran pretty well. I ran like a 56 after my second time running the 400 meter hurdles, which is considered OK. So I got a scholarship. Now, I'll make a long story short. That whole year being at Savannah State, my freshman year, it took a lot of growth and um, basically I was still maturing, my body was still maturing, and I got down to 54-7. Now, 54-7 was a pretty okay time, especially because my biggest issue was I didn't know how to, um, I didn't know how to use both legs in a hurdle. So I was always on pace to go faster and then I would find a hurdle that would require my left leg and I didn't know how to use my left leg so I would be stutter stepping so I stutter stepped to a 54 7 so I believe I could have got a whole lot faster so but that's besides the point so my point is is that you know after my my whole my after my whole freshman year I was just like man like I still never reached my goal to break sub 50 you know even like on splits I would I would run my first leg of the 4x4 and run 50.1 50.01 and mind you, like I had enough speed. I was at 22.4 from the previous year. Um, and I just believed I could. But, you know, it's just one of those barriers that is real mental, you know. Um, so I just, you know, basically this is what I did. This is why it's very important to have great friends. So that summer, I set out a plan. Um, I basically told myself, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Well, during my time training at Savannah State at that particular time, I did no over distance work. Right. All I was doing was a lot of long runs. Um, the track, you know, we the track that they had it wasn't built. Um, it was under construction the whole year, so we didn't have access to a track. So basically, it was really, really difficult to really get the kind of over distance specific work that I needed in order to do what I had to do. Um, which is crazy, being a 400 meter hurdler at the time. But my thing is that I didn't have access to a track that whole year. All right. And because of that, I wasn't able to do the 450s at 95% of my 400 meter max. Um, I wasn't able to do 300s to feel comfortable coming through the 400. So I had to do that. And thankfully, thankfully, I had, you know, some great, I have not had, I have some great friends who at that particular time came out there and helped me. You know, I had old teammates who came out and it was, you know, shout out to Sean, shout out to Kavon. You know, they came out there and they, and they put in some work with me. So we'll go out in May. Um, and do and I would do a 500 and I would tell him and, and help, you know I would tell my homie like yo blow the whistle every 15 seconds to keep me on pace now those of you who know this is kind of like a Clyde Hart system right you're, you're teaching your body to maintain the pace per 100 meters so my issue was again I wasn't slow I was pretty quick you you, you talk to anyone who runs a 22.4 they're usually running 48s but at that particular time I was running 51s in in the 400. And I didn't know why. So again, I was lacking specific strength. So my thing was I had to do what they call special endurance two work, which is basically when you're hovering around the 42nd to 92nd mark when it comes to, you know, um, runs. So that's what I would do. I would go out, hit the track and, and, and run these 500s at like 115, um, which is, a, you know, coming through at 60. And of course, 60 and, and 51 are two different things, but you can't just... Go come out of nowhere and just you know run a, a 500 at 95 percent of your pace. So I had to start from the bottom. So you know as I'm getting used to it, all of a sudden I'm able to do it 14. You know run a 14 per 100. Which if 
you quick at math, that's 56 for 400. So I will go out and run 14, you know, 28, 42, then finish at 50 or come through at 56, finish at 112. So all of a sudden I'm getting stronger. And if you see the percentages, all of a sudden that 56 is a whole lot closer in intensity than it was for a minute. You know, so I think 56 off the top of my head was maybe 90 percent, 92, 91 percent. So as I'm continuing, you know, to train at this 56, 55 pace, my body's getting used to it. It's getting used to the stress of running a 400 that, you know, because me, I would be on pace to run, you know, um, to run the time. And, and it just you know, I'll be on pace at the 200, 300, then die miserably at the 400 bodies all over the place. You just you're trying to keep it together, but your legs are flaring out. It was horrible. So, um, you know, I've been training. You know, I trained May. I trained June. Um, my body's getting used to it. I'm running, you know, 300s. Um, at certain paces, I'm also, you know, putting in some work with the short 200. So I'm doing like eight times 200s at 28. Um, I'm also by this time, I'm also doing speed work, you know, because again, at being at Savannah State at that time, I was a hurdler. We didn't have access to a track. So if you know anything about a track, you can't do pure speed work because you need spikes. You know, it's hard to do speed work on concrete with trainers on. So I didn't do pure speed work. So I was also working on 60s, uh, my 150 speed endurance. And basically, I spent this whole summer, this whole summer, putting everything together from speed work to speed endurance work to special endurance one work, running my 300s, you know, two times 300s at 37 seconds, you know, coming through the 400 at, or coming through the 200 at 24 seconds, you know, so my body is getting used to the, the things that are required of it if I'm going to put it through a 400, okay? So, you know, June comes and July comes and all of a sudden, you know, um, I take a long break, you know? And, and one one thing I can really attribute to, like, my body adapting well because, you know, now they have this thing where you go online and you look for, like, a schedule of, like, how you should train, right? You should train Monday through Friday. Monday you have this, Tuesday you have this, Wednesday off or, you know, whatever kind of thing that they have. I'm going to tell you this from experience. And this is like a little bit extra than a story time. It's kind of like an instructional. Sometimes the best thing that you can do is just listen to your body. Okay? Best thing that you can possibly do is to listen to your body. There are sometimes, like I knew what I had to do, but I didn't give myself certain days. I had to be honest with myself. There's some days I had a 500 on the paper and I told myself, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a 30 minute run as recovery. You know, to help myself recover. And then the next day I'll hit a 500 and I'll run the times. You know, if I'm exhausted, why put my body through exhaustion even deeper? Now, mind you, there's a difference between being exhausted, like like being like tired from a hard workout. It's a difference from that to being exhausted. Exhausted as in you're going to get injured or you're going to hurt yourself if you continue on. All right. So there'll be certain times where, you know, I might just train twice that week. There might be times I might train seven times that week. You know, so I knew when to put in work and I knew when to pull back. It was just instinctual. Mind you, I was 18 at the time. I wasn't, I didn't have certifications. Now I have a level two certification and it's like the, the things that I learned that through my level two certification, they, it's like coming around full circle. Oh, this is why I did that. You know, it was more instinctual as an athlete than a coach now. So, you know, like I said, going on with the story, I'm training, I'm putting in work, putting in work, putting in work, putting in work. And a meet comes up, right? So this is like a week, a week or no, it's like two weeks before my meet, maybe like 10 days. So this is like for coaches, this is like the peaking time, right? You're trying to peak your body. So I go to Florida and I go to like a family thing in Florida and I take like five days off and, you know, I get caught up in the July 4thness, right? Um, with the family and stuff. And, you know, I just, I come back and I feel you know, I feel bad. It's like you don't run in five days. You think you detrained your body's like you feel like your body lost it or doesn't know what to do. Yeah, your body definitely knows what to do, especially when you've been putting it through hell all summer. And basically, I needed that recovery. I remember the first workout I did, I did, um, I did uh, five times two, uh, five times three hundreds with five minutes rest. And for my four hundred meter runners out there, you know, this is like a classic lactic workout. So. My goal, I didn't even have a goal at the time. I didn't even like wear spikes. I wore trainers and it was on a concrete track. And I remember I came through the first one at 45 and I was like, okay, this feels okay. You know, I walked for five minutes. I did another one, you know, just trying to break the rust off and I ran 45 again. It was fairly easy. And then all of a sudden I ran 42 or I ran 43. 
And I'm like, okay, that's still, you know, I'm getting back in rhythm. And then my next one is 41. I'm like, oh, okay, 41, okay, that's, that's, and it felt good, you know. And then the next one, I run 42, and I'm just like, okay, like I, I start to feel like myself, you know. Then and, and I have a couple workouts. I have another workout the day after that, repeat 150s. You know, I'm running them in 17. I'm feeling the rhythm. The next day, I run six times. Like these are hard back-to-back workouts I'm doing. You know, the next day, I'm running uh, six times 200s at 25 seconds, you know, to kind of simulate the last 200. And it has a walking 200 rest, so about three, three and a half minutes. And I'm running all of them. My first one was 26, and the rest of them were 25. And I'm just like, man, like, I'm not playing. Like, this is no joke. You know, I give myself two minute, two days rest. Um, I do strides on a Monday heading into the meet. That Tuesday, I ran a 450. Now, this day is the day I knew that I was going to kill the next 400 I ran, okay? Basically, I ran this 450 like an even split 400. I didn't go out blazing, but I tried to finish hard, all right? Which is like a weak, was a weakness of mine where I would go out blazing fast and then die. This time, I'm running it like a four, a true 400, even paced, you know, and I'm attacking it even splits. You know, I'm running this, you know, 400 or this 450 and I run it in 53 seconds. I come through the 453 and I keep going and I run 58. Now, if you're good at math and you're looking at that split, it's like I didn't slow down. I didn't die. I basically sprinted to the finish line after I set that pace. So it's like afterwards, I felt great. I was just like, wow, like I'm going to do some crazy things. You know, I run a couple. Um, If you're familiar with Clyde Hart and Michael Johnson, they have these things called... Uh, 30, 30, 200s, you run a 230, 30 seconds rest, and I ran three of them, all of them under 30. And I'm just like, man, I'm in great shape. You know, I take a break that Wednesday. That was on a Tuesday. I take a break that Wednesday. Thursday, I come back and I do this workout. In a, in a, I do a workout in my last workout before the race. And I do a, uh, I do a run in the rain. Now I'm just like, man, what can I do in the rain? Like it's raining, it's raining hard, it's thunderstorming. I love running. If you, if you're a true like cross country track and field runner, you love running in the rain, right? Because it's still humid, especially summer rain. It's still humid. It's still you know warm, but it's uh, it's something with battling with the elements. It's just like you and the elements going back and forth. So basically, this is what happened in this particular workout. I'm running, and the workout is six times. I believe no, it was five times two hundreds with fifty sixty seconds rest. So this was like a really aggressive recovery run, but it was to test my lungs out to see, to see how, like, if I can, like, continue the effort with less oxygen when I'm running, which is basically the 400 in, like, the later portions of the race. So basically, I was, it was like a cut down. So the first one was, like, 30. The second one was 28. Now, mind you, these were, like, I'm walking back, like, 50 meters it's like 45, 60 seconds rest. It's like no rest. I'm walking back 50 meters, right? And I start again, 200. Walk back, so it's around the track. So I start out at 30, then 28, and then I go down to 27. I, I'm, I'm just at 27, 27, and then I finish up in 28. And I'm just like, man, like I'm in really, really good shape. Like, And it was in the rain. So imagine if it was like in the dryness of like, you know, just a, a regular summer day. So, you know, th- that day I took an ice bath. Friday, I, I, I rested, and Monday comes, and, you know, um, I have, I, I schedule myself to run the 100, 200, and 400, right? So, our first thing that I run is the 200. I run 22.7. I'm just like, ugh. It was disgusting. Like, it was like, it wasn't good. Like, I was all over the place, and I thought for a sec, I'm just like, man, like, I hope I really, like, this meat does not turn out bad, because I put in too much work for this, you know, but... To be fair, you know, it was it was what was needed to knock the dust off, so I'm not too mad. So the next event that I have to run is the 400, right? The weather is 81 degrees. It's sunny. I never forget. And um, I run the 400, and I run against uh, this guy. His name is Antonio Carter. So shout out to Antonio Carter out there, man. He he ran for track by track, and really talented athlete. Unit, ran for the University of Tennessee, and um. Dude, he was an 800 meter runner. So if you know what 800 meter runners who run the 400, they run it real even split. He went out at a good pace, and he's gonna finish. He's gonna finish hard. So um, at that time, you know he's he's in my outside. I'm in. He's in like lane six. I'm in lane five, 
And there's some other people in the heat, but I raced against them and I already knew that I could beat them. So it was just, I knew that this guy was going to go. He was getting ready for nationals. I know he was ready to go. So basically what I did was I, you know, I usually go out for hard, like 23s and, and stuff. So I, I decided, you know, take my time. So I ran, you know, the gun goes off pow and I get off um, and I go off, you know, at 60, you know, first 60, I, I, I take it out. And on the back straight, I relax. I catch my rhythm. You know, I'm catching my rhythm, catching my rhythm. I get into the 200. I still feel the rhythm. You know, I'm approaching the 150, and I start to shift gears. I start to go a little bit faster, and I start to catch him. You know, so all this time that I'm running, you know, the first 60, the back straight, we're, we're had the same stagger. Now, this tells me that I'm going out a lot slower than what I used to go out at. I was maybe going out at 24, where previous I would go out at like 23.5. But I knew because I've been training that I can handle going out at that slow and still finish and, and finish hard. You know, I didn't have that second gear to finish hard, but now I do. Right. So I, that's what I've been training for. So the 150 comes and he starts to attack. You know, he, he's going to his arms, that 800 meter strength. And mind you, he was... Uh, 154 at the time so he you know he had the strength to finish and, and all that stuff and me I, I pfft, this is my first 400 training you know in, in two three months so I just said let's bring it let's go and and the 150 comes and I'm building up in the last 100 I'm giving it my all pumping my arms pumping my arms pumping my arms pumping my arms all the way to the finish line and me and him are fighting and I, I'm inching up behind, in front of him he's coming in front of me and then he just catches me at the line right catches me at the line and I don't know what I ran like mind you you know that 400 meter feeling when you're you know you're have a headache you feel like the world's about to crash down you just you know the 400 is a hell of an event but after I finished running I was okay like it was okay I ran I wasn't sure what I ran because I was just like I took it out hopefully I ran good and I walked off the line like it wasn't I wasn't difficult to me and I look at the time, and it's a 49.5, 9. And I'm just in disbelief. I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, I ran 49.59. And it's like all the practices, all the hard work I put in, like, paid off. And I was just really, really excited because that had to be the easiest 400 I've ever ran. And, you know, thinking back to it, even now, it's like I ran 49, you know, times after that. But that first one was probably the most beautiful I could think of like you know my splits were probably like 24 and some change and 24 and some change or 25 like I finished hard and I felt great you know um you know it would have been great to win but you know I actually meddled in that meet I got third overall it was a high school meet at the time because um at that time I was high school age like I was 18 so um even though I was in college I was still able to like go to that meet because I was considered still 18, like 18th year. So it was like an AAU, USATF thing. So it was just really, really cool to like experience that, you know, running sub 50 and the way I ran sub 50 and all the work I put in, you know, on those summer days in Atlanta. And it's like, you know, I didn't, it didn't take a coach. It just took into, it took intuition. It took feeling, it took friends, it took hard work. It took, you know, um, you know, my, mom let me use her car to go to practice let me use the car to go to meets like it, it took so much so you know it was just a really really exciting feeling when I was able to break 50 for the first time so you know um so yeah guys I hope you enjoyed the story time or the story about the first time I broke 50 you know did, did you guys run the 400 let me know in the bottom um in the comments and stuff like when was the first time you broke 50 you know um was it when you were in the middle school high school you know what was the experience like? Like what were you, are, was that your event? You know what was what was your first moment? You broke fifty and like how did it feel for you? You know definitely definitely let me know in the comments below. Like comment and subscribe. Let me know you know if you want to see any more videos about you know story times. I've 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 run almost every event that you can think of. I, I have a wide range, so I'm thinking about doing a little bit more story times about you know different events that I ran. Uh, maybe the first time I broke, I ran 16.01. A lot of people don't know that. I ran 16.01 for a 5K when I was in college, uh, my first year at Savannah State. So, um, yeah, so hopefully uh, we, we'll get to that. And like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments about the first time you broke through any event. 
And um, I'll see you soon. It's Deep Brown. Peace.